welcome to the Oakley Roads YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking all about irons. As many of you know, I have been playing around with quite a few different irons lately. I had some iron problems a few months ago, so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to buy a whole bunch of different irons. I actually have five different irons here, and I'm just going to play with them and see which ones are good, which ones are not good. So these all range in price, and I'll let you know the price of each one of them. I will have links for all these irons down below. I will also have a timestamp down in the comment section for each one of these irons. So if you're interested in just learning about one of them, just go click on that timestamp and it's gonna take you straight there in the video. I'm also gonna briefly talk about a couple of pressing mats. I've seen a lot of things in the comments about these lately, so we're gonna just chat about that. This is just, just gonna be like a hangout and let's like talk about irons day. So, so if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. We usually have sewing tutorials that come out every Monday. Thursdays, we often have other types of videos like this one or embroidery tutorials, all kinds of fun stuff. If you like this video at any point, please give it a like. And if you have any questions, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. You guys, there are so many irons out there. There are so many different irons. So this is not by any means like the best of the best. These are just the irons that I saw good reviews for or I personally heard from some of you tell me you really liked. I wasn't going to be spending a ton of money, to be completely honest. There are some irons out there that are just like cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. I was not willing to invest that much money in an iron because I really believe that they don't have the longest lifespans and even the expensive ones don't tend to last that long and I just, I just didn't want to invest a ton of money in something that I'm going to be replacing in anywhere from a year or less. So real quick, the five irons we're going to be talking about today are the Rowenta Focus, the Beutral, professional steam iron, the pure steam iron, and the chi electric iron. We're also going to go over this little guy, this little Panasonic cordless iron, and I don't have the other one with me, but I will briefly go over one of my favorite irons, which was another Panasonic cordless iron, just a different model. Okay, so first let's talk about pressing mats. As a lot of you guys know in my videos, I'm always using these wool pressing mats. Now, the reason I use this is because my camera is right here. That's why. I, my ironing board is over there. My camera is right here. I don't want to move my camera around a whole bunch. So what I do is I just move my ironing station to my cutting mat. Now, typically when I'm working in my sewing room and I'm using a lot of steam and I'm pressing for long periods of time, I am at my ironing board and I do actually use these mats and I cover my ironing board with these mats. I have about three of these total. Now here's the thing, you will often see me grab one of these mats and I will lay it right on top of my cutting mat and then I will iron. And I've seen a few of you guys mention comments saying, you're mad at me about that because you did the same thing and it warped your cutting mat. Yeah, it does that to mine too. So when, if you use a lot of steam and a lot of heat, your, your cutting mat is going to feel that. This does not prevent anything from going through it. So a lot of steam and a lot of heat, it's gonna go right through the bottom of this and it's going to kind of make your cutting mat bubble. Now in my experience, I have four cutting mats here and I have pressed on all of them with these pressing mats and every single one of them, if I steam it for a long time, they do bubble. They have all gone back down flat. They have all flattened out. But like I said, I have quite a few here so I can kind of stack them on top of each other. But for the most part, they go back down and not very quickly, but they do go back flat. None of them are still bubbled. So if you're having a problem with that, I do suggest you put this on something that's not a cutting mat. Maybe put it on your ironing board. There are these like metal magnetic sheets that are kind of cushiony. You can get on Amazon. I'll have a link for those. That's what we use over at Studio B. We put that on top of the table and then we put this on top of that and that kind of helps protect the table from getting any moisture on it, which is really the problem here. The hot moisture is the problem. But I have two here. This is a rectangle mat I got from Amazon and this is my square mat. It's a little bit bigger. You can see I use it a lot. And this is from So Sweetness. I highly prefer the one from So Sweetness versus the one from Amazon. I'll talk to you guys a little bit more in a minute about the ironing. I've only had problems ironing on these mats with one iron. So I have seen some people say they have problems with the mats and we'll discuss what they are, but I've only had problems ironing on this specific mat, the Amazon mat, with one iron, which pretty much destroyed my iron. But I only had it happen to one iron and I have ironed on this sucker with all of my irons. So 
I don't know if it's an iron problem or a matte problem. So the first iron we're gonna go over is this Panasonic cordless iron. Now, the price on this does fluctuate. I've seen it as high as $100. Currently looking at Amazon, it is $69.22. This was actually the first iron that I purchased when I started quilting years and years ago. So when I was first setting up my little quilt spot with my little sewing machine and my laptop and then I needed an iron, this was the iron I got. I thought cordless was awesome. I was very excited about that. It's super cute. It's got this adorable little green shell that goes over it. I mean, it was just, it was one of those things where it was like you could take it with you, you can take it on the go, and it's cordless. So. This is not the same iron that I started with years ago. The iron that I was using for years, I didn't use distilled water, I just used sink water and I lived in a house that had a well. So the minerals and all the stuff that was in that water did build up and it got to a point where every single time I used the steam with my iron, I got black marks on everything. I cleaned it with vinegar, I cleaned it with everything you can imagine. It wouldn't stop. I eventually did have to throw that iron away because I couldn't get it to work the way I wanted it to. One thing to note about this iron is that it does get hot when it's charging on its base. So it's not one of those irons that you can use and just kind of leave on your table and then just use again in five minutes. You really need to put it back on the base when you're not using it. So, is, is there really a point in the cordless feature if it has to be on here to heat up all the time? I don't know, I don't know. It, it depends on what you're using it for. So you can see this iron comes with the iron, the docking station, a retractable cord, and then a cover to cover the iron when it's not in use. It has low, medium, and high settings. It's got this reservoir here, this piece here does come off. You can fill this up with water. I don't think that this unit comes with a little cup. So you usually just have to pour your water in with the you know, distilled water tank or you'll have to get another cup to pour this in. So it's a little tricky to get this in and not get it very messy. It doesn't hold a whole lot of water. You can see that this is the water reservoir right here. It's got a steam from the front and then a steam from the bottom and then just three levels here. There's not a whole lot to this iron. It doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles. It does work. However, this iron is quite new. I would say about the fourth or fifth time that I used this, I ironed this iron on this pressing mat. Just ironed on the pressing mat. Then I smelled something kind of funny. And then I looked at my iron. I don't know if you can see. You see that? You see all that gunk all over my iron? Yeah, completely coated my iron. And I think it's the wool from this pressing mat that burned onto this iron. And I will tell you, I've cleaned a lot of irons. There's a lot of tricks out there for cleaning irons. My favorite one is to get a cold iron and a wet magic clean eraser and scrub, scrub, scrub. Nothing was getting this stuff off. I've tried everything. I've tried dryer sheets, I've tried the iron cleaning wipes, I've tried a wet towel, you know, and a hot iron. I've tried everything. This sucker is not going to work. And the really unfortunate thing about that is that this gunk here, no matter how hard I try to get it off, it won't scrub off. But when I use the iron, little pieces of it like to come off on my fabric. And I can't have that. I can't have stuff like this on a white bag. You know what I mean? So currently this iron is unusable. I know it's so cute. I know a lot of you guys love it. Honestly, I used it for years and I think it's great. It has a stainless steel plate. So it's not a non-stick ceramic plate, it's a stainless steel plate. That was something that a few of you guys reached out to me and said that I should look at, I should avoid a stainless steel plate. Here's the thing, I know a lot of you guys have just got this iron and I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to make you feel like that was a bad decision. This iron is honestly one of my favorite irons. You just gotta be careful with it. If you're using this iron with a wool pressing mat, I highly suggest you get the one from So Sweetness, not the one off of Amazon. Yes, it's a little bit more money, better quality, trust me. So I would suggest that, or just use it with a regular ironing board, not a wool pressing mat. Make sure you always use distilled water. Don't use the water out of your sink. This iron is fantastic, but you gotta take care of it. So that's my advice for this iron. Okay, the next iron I'm just gonna real quickly talk about is actually my favorite iron, and it was the one I was using until somebody decided to use it on parlor beads, you know, those little plastic beads that you smush down with an iron and then they get like into a design. Somebody didn't cover it 
and it just melted all over the iron. Couldn't clean it, couldn't fix it, had to chunk it. Couldn't find another one because a bunch of you guys keep buying it and selling it out, but it's the Panasonic Cordless Iron 360. I'll have a picture of it right here. It has a really unique shape. It's got the point on the top and the point on the bottom. However, that means you cannot stand it up on its side. So for most irons, we can stand it up on its side and it will sit like that. That Panasonic one, you cannot do that with because it has the point on the top and the bottom. However, it is a fantastic iron. Because of that shape, you can really get into a lot of nooks and crannies, which I really like. It's not really big, it's nice and small. To be completely honest, when that iron got destroyed by somebody in my house I won't name, I did go to find another one. I just wanted to buy that one again because I loved it so much and it was sold out everywhere, which is why I bought five different irons instead. However, I am still on the hunt. When I see it again, I will probably purchase that iron. Once again, it is one of my favorites. It's very easy to work with. Highly, highly recommend that iron. So next, let's talk about this Rowenta iron. This is the box it comes in. It's the Rowenta Focus. At the time of filming, this iron costs $88.99 on Amazon. This has a stainless steel sole plate with the micro steam. So this iron came with this plastic base here. I honestly have no idea what this is for. This might have just been for shipping, but I held on to it because I thought maybe it was like a heat tray type thing. I don't know. So the iron did not come with any sort of cup to pour in. And I will tell you that pouring water into this reservoir was a little tricky. You can see here's the hole for it. It does not detach, I don't think. Yeah, this does not detach, so you have to take your water and pour it in here. It's a little awkward. It does make a bit of a mess. Here we go, I'll just show you. So if you have a full tub of distilled water like I do and you try to get it in there, it does kind of drip and make a bit of a mess, but that's fine. Oh dear, well, that's a big mess. I'm just gonna switch out my mat real quick while this dries. So here we have some fabric. I'll show you here on the iron. We have a steam. We have the spray steam that goes out there. You can set your level of steam here. Down here on the inside, you have a knob to determine what type of fabric you're sewing on. So the heat level, so min, max. I usually go all the way to the hottest it will go and maximum steam. So here is a piece of crinkly fabric. And if I just run this over, it works very, very well. I mean, it works fast. The steam isn't really aggressive. It's like a nice, easy steam. You'll see in some of these irons, it's just like, whoa, big steam. So this just kind of comes in spurts. It works really well. When I lift the iron back up, it does spray a little bit, but not a ton. Some of these irons do, you'll see that. So I honestly actually really like the Rowenta. I just, you know, I wish it came with a cup because it is so difficult to get water in the reservoir. But other than that, I think this iron is great. So you see when I lift it up, there we go. All of the irons I'm reviewing today have auto shutoffs. I think that's very, very important. I am somebody who does just kind of leave my iron out. So auto shut off is important. Some of them are a little loud when they shut off and some of them shut off very quickly. So this will auto shut off after eight minutes of being in the upright position or after 30 seconds of being in the down position. So if you are using this for like heat transfer vinyl and you need to hold it down for longer than 30 seconds, just know that it will shut off after 30 seconds. But overall, I really like the Rowenta. I actually gave this iron to my mom. She's using it in Studio B. I would give this iron two thumbs up, highly recommend it. All right, the next iron we're gonna look at is this Chi iron. This came highly recommended by quite a few of you. It's definitely like the fanciest box. It really looks like, I mean, you know, if you purchase like a Chi straightening iron, they're really known for their packaging and like the aesthetic. It's very, very sleek looking. It's very fancy and shiny, which, you know, I always love. This iron currently lists for $74.99 over on Amazon. So it is a more expensive iron, just like the Rowenta. This has a titanium infused ceramic sole plate. So I believe it's the same sole plate, the same type of plates they use on their hair irons. So that was kind of like the big selling point for me. I will say I like this iron, but I don't love this iron. And I really wanted to love the iron. So here it is, look, look how beautiful this is. I mean, it really is such a beautiful iron. And let me just tell you right now, there's a lot of people who own this iron and they rave about it. I mean, they, it's their favorite iron of all time. 
I would suggest it. I definitely think if you're interested in buying it, definitely go for it, go buy it. But I don't think you need, I mean, same with the Rowenta. I don't think you need to spend that much money on these irons to get a good iron. However, this is a really beautiful iron. So I'm gonna show you right now, we're just going to add the water. So this iron does not come with a cup for adding water, which I wish it did. I, I really feel like all of them should. It says that it has this easy to switch around top so that you can add water easily. However, if you're adding water to it from, you know, my big distilled water here, it's, it's a pretty small hole to get in there and I still make a mess usually. So I'm gonna try not to make a huge mess like I did with the Rowenta. It actually has a very big water reservoir here on the side. You can add quite a bit of water to this. So I like that. I like not having to fill up my iron, you know, every 10 minutes or so. So we're going to adjust this. So it has a knob here and you turn it and then up here it has your screen to show you where you're going. We're gonna go up to linen. I like it hot and steamy. So I'm gonna take the steam all the way to the right. There we go. It also has a self clean feature. I've never used that. So now we're gonna let this warm up. Now this is nice because it does blink while it's warming up and then once it's completely warmed up, it'll be solid. I haven't had any problems whatsoever about using this iron on any of the pressing mats, nothing like that. This iron is great, honestly. When it's in the down position, it does lose its heat pretty quickly. So it's another one of those, you can't like leave it down for too long. So if you're applying like a lot of woven interfacing to your fabric and you're gonna keep your iron down for a long period of time, it's not gonna let you do that. It's going to lose the heat. You're gonna to have to lift it back up, let it reheat, put it back down, use it for a few seconds, lift it back up, let it reheat, put it back down. This also has a lot of like lift up steam. So you'll notice in some irons, you know, while you're ironing, it has a nice steam, it works really well. And then you lift it up and pew, steam everywhere. It makes a huge noise, makes a bubbling sound. This is one of those irons that does that. Okay, now that it's heated up, it's a solid light. I'm going to take my piece of fabric, I crinkled it up, and we'll just iron this real quick. So it doesn't get the creases out as fast as the Rowenta did. I'm waiting for that steam to kick in. I didn't put a ton of water in it. There we go, so the steam is kicking in now. It's a nice light steam, which is nice. There we go. And then when we lift it up, you can see it spits out quite a bit. Some of these irons do that. You lift it up and it spits a lot and it makes a lot of noise. Now this isn't that big of a deal. I do videos, so I have to pay attention to that noise. However, when I'm sewing regularly, that doesn't really bother me. So this iron works really, really well. I would say if you're interested in getting it, go ahead and grab it. It is, it is a good iron. It's, but it's not, you know, like, it's not the type of iron that I would say definitely spend $100 on. It's worth every penny. I think that there are much more affordable irons that are work just as well. And I would say that about the Rowenta too. So next we're gonna talk about the Beutral. I think it's what's called Beutral? Beutral Professional Steam Iron. This was off of Amazon. This iron is $34.95, so it's a little bit more affordable. I would say it's definitely worth every penny. I honestly really like this iron. So we open this up. I'll tell you one of the, uh, one of the things I got most excited about when I was opening up the box for this iron was that it comes with a cup. Come on, irons. Why do you not all give us a cup? Just give us a cup. Give us a cup with a spout. Pouring out of this thing into an iron is a pain in the butt. Just give me a cup, okay? Give me a cup. So one thing I will note about this iron is that it is a chatterbox. It is a loud iron. It has a loud beeping sound that is on the same level as a fire alarm in your house. I will tell you multiple times, this thing will beep when it's ready to go. It'll beep when it's turning off. It'll beep when you plug it in. And it's so loud and it does so many beeps that you do, people in the house will be like, is there, is this smoke detector? It's not, it's your iron, but it just really wants you to know it's doing something. So since we have a cup, let's pour our water into the cup. Do you see, look how much easier this is for me. I'm pouring the water into a cup. Come on, so much easier. And then we can open up the top here and it's a very small hole. I would definitely make a mess if I was trying to pour out of my water jug into there. Probably still make a mess with the cup. Nope, look at me, look at me. See how much easier that is? 
This also has a decent size water reservoir. I filled up this cup entirely and let's see that was 200 milliliters of water and we are only here on the iron. We have all the way here to go. In the, so you can put a lot of water in here. That's really nice. We have a nice digital screen here. I'm going to turn it on and then you push the button to see where you want to go. If you're going the lowest heat setting up to nylon, silk, polyester, blend, wool, cotton, jeans, linen. That's where I go. I know, I know I'm using cotton most of the time. I just, I like it hot and steamy. So I go hot and I go all steam. There we go. And now we're going to let this heat up and this will beep at us when it is ready. All right, so now it is all ready to go. Let's grab our piece of fabric and we will just start ironing. Let's see how this goes. There we go. It takes just a moment to get the steam going. But it's a nice light steam. It's not, and I have it on the heaviest setting so you can see the steam coming, but it's not really aggressive. See how long we can leave this down for. So you see after a few seconds, it's gonna say pause. I think it's about 30 seconds. And do you see how loud that is? It's quite loud and it wants you to lift it back up. So we're gonna lift it back up. It has a good steam. It doesn't spit out a bunch of water or a ton of steam when you lift it back up. So I really appreciate that. But you can see as we lift it back up, now what it wants to do is it wants to reheat. It's really just a sensor. It's, it's a precautionary thing. It doesn't want you to accidentally leave this iron down, walk away, set your house on fire. You know, it's just to be safe. But again, if you're doing something like applying a lot of interfacing to some fabric and you need to leave your iron down for a long time, or if you're doing heat transfer vinyl where you need to leave it down for longer than 30 seconds, just be mindful that this iron will stop. It, the, the heat will stop. So you're gonna have to lift it up and then put it right back down. But I do like that I can lift this up and down and I don't get water everywhere. I don't have a ton of noise and steam from it. I highly, highly recommend this iron. This iron is fantastic for the price. It is great. It doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles. It's comfortable. It's not super heavy. It holds a lot of water. Probably my top recommendation out of all the irons, I would say this one is the best. And just to go over it, this is another ceramic coated sole plate. It is not a stainless steel sole plate. It is ceramic. I think I do prefer the ceramic over the stainless steel. I feel like I have less problems with things sticking to it. I feel like it's a lot easier to keep clean. So personally, I would go for an iron that has a ceramic sole plate. Let's see, it has an 11 and a half ounce water tank. So it has a good amount of space for water. So just like the other irons, it will shut off after 30 seconds of being down or eight minutes of being upright and not being used. All right, and the last iron we're gonna go over is the iron that I currently have plugged in next to my ironing board. It's the one I've been using in all the videos lately. It's really just the last one I tried out and I like it, so I just keep using it. This is the Pure Steam Professional Grade Steam Iron. Now this iron, so this iron has a stainless steel sole plate. I know I just said I prefer ceramic. I do, but I do like this iron. I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. And this iron is also a nice price. It is $39.95 currently on Amazon. It's a great one. It's a good size. Here, let me show you. It is pretty. It's black and blue. It has a nice large reservoir. It comes with a cup. It comes with a cup. Let me get the cup. Here we go. It comes with a 200 milliliter cup. You can fill the sucker up pretty well. I love that. Thank you. Why is it that the expensive irons don't come with a cup? Why is it that the most affordable irons are the ones that come with a cup? Just, just give us a cup. Okay. Just give us a cup. Just give us a cup. So this iron does not have a digital screen and it is not super fancy. We've got make it hot, make it steamy. Perfect for me. You know, if you're not doing a lot of clothing, I, it's funny, it's funny as like bag makers, I spend so much time ironing, but I, I never, I never iron clothes. We've got with the wrinkliest family ever. We never iron our clothes. So I don't need all the bells and whistles. I don't need it for silk. I don't need it for all these different things. I really just need it to get hot and I need it to get steamy, but I don't always need it to be steamy. So I need steam, yes or no, hot, yes. So I set this to as hot as it will go, easy peasy. I set the steam all the way over to the side. Let's fill up our cup. You see this? Look at this. For clumsy people like me, a cup is just so helpful. This is a good cup too. It has a nice spout. It's nice and sharp here, so you don't have to worry about it going everywhere. 
can open the top lid here, it pops up. And this is a nice big hole as well, so if you were using just the bottle, then that would be fine. So once this is ready to go, it'll turn green. Let's get our piece of fabric. Got it crinkled again. Let's iron it. It steams quickly. It does give out pretty good gusts of steam. The thing about this one though is that it is very noisy when you lift it up. You can see as it's been down for a while, it starts to turn red, meaning that it wants to reheat and it's only gonna do that if you lift it up. And you see that's kind of loud. It's kind of loud and very steamy. It spits up a lot every time we lift it up. I don't love that. But other than that, I think that this, this is an iron that is just as good as the more expensive ones. So the Pure Steam, I would highly recommend. Okay, so as you've seen, we've been ironing with steam on this pressing mat for a while, and this is on top of my cutting mat. If I take this away, do you see this here? You see that? It's bubble. It has a big bubble right now on my cutting mat, and it's wet. Like, if I touch this, it's wet. It's hot and it's wet. So what happens is this is going to stay like this for a little while, but as this cools down, and I probably just within an hour, this will just flatten back out and this bubble won't stay. I know some of you have said that you have warped your cutting mats and it did not go flat again. If you're worried about that, do not use a cutting mat underneath your wool pressing mat. Definitely invest in one of those covers to put between your tabletop or your cutting mat and your wool mat because the wool mat does not prevent the heat and the steam from going through it. It's still gonna go through it. But I will tell you for me, I have a lot of cutting mats and I've never thrown any of them away because the, they don't stay warped. They do go back down. So I hope that this video helped you with your iron shopping. I know there's a lot of other irons out there. I, you know the, what was it, the Oslo one? I forgot what it's called, but the one where like, it just like has little feet and pops back up on its own. I've almost bought that iron multiple times, but to be completely honest, the price tag and also the way I've seen other people talk about it prevent me from buying the iron. Now I know some people really love it and we all love the idea of it because you don't have to lift it up. You just keep it down and it's little feet are like, oh, we're not ironing, pop up. But I have seen so many people have issues with it and have to work with the company to get another one because of the issues. And to be completely honest, I do not have time for that. At that price point with something like that, I really, I really don't want to be dealing with any sort of problems with a basic tool like an iron. So I am more than happy to not have the fancy iron and have just more affordable iron that just works because the iron is, it's an essential tool in bag making, but it's not like, it doesn't need a lot of bells and whistles, right? It just needs to get the stuff flat and it needs to adhere interfacing to my fabric. I just need it to get hot and steamy. All right, well, I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. Whatever iron you're using, let me know down in the comments. Tell me if you love it, tell me if you hate it. If there's an iron you're looking into buying, write it down there too, and anybody else, check those comments, and if you have that iron, let them know what you think of it. There are so, so many options out there. Maybe I'll purchase some more in the near future. I don't know, probably not. I have a lot of irons to burn through here. This is probably going to last me for the next 10 years, hopefully. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. Get out there and make something. Bye.